and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of pre-AP chemistry. That's 10th grade honors chemistry, and we're talking about the laboratory and safety in the laboratory. Let's look at what we do in an emergency. If there's an emergency, the first thing you want to do is tell the teacher. I mean, if, if it's, you know, something very straightforward or you think you got to get to the eye wash, you want to get moving too, but call the teacher over ASAP. Um, if there's an acid spill, grab the baking soda. I have some acid spill, you know, special material that we buy, but by and large, this is the cheapest and most effective way. And you take the baking soda and you spread it around the edges of the acid spill to keep it from, uh, you know, spreading out. And what's really nice is you're going to make a salt plus ultimately CO2. Well, CO2 is a gas that's going to bubble. And so once you're done with bubbling, you know that you've neutralized all of the acid. For a base spill, we're going to add vinegar because if we add too much, it's no big deal. All right, so we'll pour vinegar over our base spills. Um, if it's broken glass, I will by and large clean up the broken glass. So if you would just come and get me. Uh, we do have a special glass disposal box. And if you look in the back of my room on, on top of the back sink, you'll see this glass disposal box. And that's where we will be putting broken glass so I can package it up so it can be disposed of safe, safely. The eye wash. The eye wash is in the back of our room. All right, if you look in the back of our room, this is the back door. And the hood is right here. And right next to the hood is the eye wash. And you want to be able to find the eye wash with your eyes closed. Because if you need an eye wash, you probably got to keep your eyes closed. So you should definitely know where that is. And you need to be washing your eyes for 10 to 15 minutes. So you get yourself over there or get your partner over to the eye wash, but call me over loudly so I can come and help. Um, the eye wash is also really good for flushing your arm or your face if you get a chemical on either one of those. So it has some dual purposes as well, other purposes. Um, chemical burns, if you get chemicals on you and it's irritating or burning you, um, you, you need to let me know. We don't neutralize. Neutralization reactions release heat and that can actually then cause a, a heat burn as, as in addition to the chemical burn. So you don't want to necessarily try to neutralize it. The key thing is to rinse the area thoroughly with water in the sink, or like I mentioned, you can use the eye wash for that. Uh, and if it's a substantial amount, yes indeedy, you will go into the shower. You can ask me about my one and only experience with having to use that. All right, if it is a fire, um, for very small fires, we can use an inverted beaker. Uh, what the goal is if it's a small fire is to stop the source of oxygen. Combustion needs oxygen. So in effect, what we're trying to do is smother the, um, the fire. Okay? If somebody's clothes are on fire, we're going to use the fire blanket. Do you remember good old stop, drop, and roll? So you stop, drop, and start rolling, and somebody get a fire blanket, and let's throw it on top of the person, and hopefully I'm there long before we have to deal with all of those points, and I can help you. For larger fires, we may need the fire extinguisher. I have never had to use a fire extinguisher, so fortunately, we've been very careful. If we keep our lab safe, we don't have to worry about these emergencies. Um, but what we need to do is pull the silver pin, then you point the nozzle, and then you press. So pull, point, press. Okay, so that's how we would do that. Um, we want to use the fire extinguisher. We do not want to use water. There are times when water actually feeds the chemical reaction, and we don't want to have that to happen, so we're not going to use water. Um, if it's a thermal burn, you want to flush with cold area, again in the sink or the eye wash, and then come see me. I have burn cream or we'll send you to the nurse. Um, other first aid kit, uh, tips for fainting, we want to get the doors open, get the person out in the hallway maybe, because uh, it, it could be that there's it's stuffy in the room or there's some fumes in the room that are irritating the person, and make sure the head is lower than the rest of the body. Um, if it's a major cut, we're going to apply pressure 
and we're going to either call the nurse or get the nurse as quickly as possible. The number for poison control is right above my telephone, or was. I'll double check that for the year. All right. So those are some of our key safety tips um, for understanding some of our safety vocabulary that we're going to see. Corrosive effectively means to eat away or to pit. So acids eat away or pit uh, the surfaces. It's going something that's corrosive is going to attack the skin. Toxic means it's poisonous. Cyanide, arsenic, those are poisonous. Irritant means you're going to get a rash or you know some sort of sense some sort of allergic allergic reaction. And uh, you know if you would, I, I usually will get uh, little bulletins about this about you, but if, if you have specific allergies that you know about, make sure I'm well aware of them. Okay, carcinogen is cancer causing. We, we work in AP with some pretty tricky chemicals, definitely some toxic things that we want to be very careful with. I think um, flammable is, you know, pretty self-explanatory, but it's easily set on fire. Pre-AP, your chemicals are pretty straightforward. When you get into AP, we worry about this a little bit more. Um, it can combust. We have to be careful because some things are spontaneously combustible. Um, radioactive, it's going to emit... Um, some particles that we're going to talk about and often very high energy waves called gamma radiation. Okay, So we learn a little bit more about that when we are in the atom unit. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to stop this one for now. We have a little bit more we want to do in terms of understanding safety vocabulary with some of the sim symbols and documentation that we use to communicate safety issues about our chemicals. So until then, this is signing off.